Okay, so to continue on this train of thought here, you know, you're getting the cost down at the factory level, doing all these things, uh, but at some point you won't be able to really improve the cost of the cathode that much. Like you're still relying on those raw materials. After costs reach the theoretical limit, the future driver will be cathode chemistry differentiation, um, which is what you were alluding to earlier. We got NCA, NCM, NCM523, and NCM, all these different um, yeah. sort of types here. So I guess that would be a game of like optimizing. We got too much nickel. Nickel's going up in price. Let's reduce our nickel a little bit to go for this. So let's take LFP, for example. And there's been a bunch of press out there about how Tesla's going to use LFP. But even beyond that, Western automakers in general want to use more LFP coming out of China. What does LFP lack? Lacks nickel and it lacks cobalt. The iron industry, the phosphate industry, these are large industries. There's a lot of material out there that's available. And so there's some risk mitigation in your operating cost of production and having your bill of materials kind of run away because of nickel prices running away when you shift to a chemistry like that. But really the argument in this page is not about the price of the materials. The argument in this page is as a way to differentiate their products, automakers will start to decouple the battery as a product and the vehicle body as a product. So what I'm saying over here is I will have a choice as a consumer in the future about what type of battery I want based on what I, how my driver profile is. And the example I give is always like my parents own a Model 3. They drive like five miles a day. I own a Model 3. I used to commute 50 miles a day. Why do we have the same battery pack? Why do we have the exact same battery chemistry? Yeah, you have, your parents have so many raw materials that are so valuable and precious almost not being used or leveraged. And but they're also, they're also charging at home. I'm charging at superchargers. And like the, 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 the trickle rate of charging is different. Totally. So what I'm saying is the one size fits all battery pack that's being done today for consumers works because that's what was needed to get the battery prices down. But in an effort to compete in the future, like a car company will be telling you as a consumer, hey, do you want a battery pack that's better for road trips or do you want a battery pack that's better for five mile commutes? Do you want a battery pack that's better in heavy snow environments or do you live in Texas and do you only want a battery pack that can deal with extreme heat? And the chemistries can be differentiated up to a certain extent to dictate the best performance. Fascinating. And it seems like, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if you know about it or probably can't comment, but if those rumors in Tesla and China are true, that would almost be the first use case where we're seeing Tesla hit enough scale to where they're sort of having the same vehicle, but two different battery chemistries for different geographies. Like, it sounds like that's a sneak preview of what's to come, really, based on what you're saying. Absolutely. Absolutely.